Resident Evil 4 came out for the GameCube only a few days into 2005, but remains unsurpassed as hands down the best horror-themed action game on the market. Hot on the heels of the success of that game, Capcom announced Excuse Resident me. Evil 4 was also headed to the PlayStation 2. The good news is this new version of RE4 sacrifices very little and delivers pretty much the same incredibly fun, freaky action. The PS2 version even packs in a few exclusive extras, though it's not like you should dump your GameCube copy of the game in favor of this one. Simply put, Resident Evil 4 for the PS2 opens up this amazing game to a wide new audience of people who haven't experienced this game already. If you're already familiar with the GameCube version of the game, let's go over the differences in the PS2 version. Most notably among them, there's a whole new side story now called Separate Ways, which details what uh, the secret agent Ada Wong was doing while Leon S. Kennedy was busy fighting his way through hordes of ganados. It takes place pretty much during the same time as the main adventure of Resident Evil 4, uh, but it's all through Ada Wong's perspective and gives you some more insight into the story and uh, lets you play around with some cool new tricks all her own. Note that you do need to finish the game in order to access separate ways, so if you've already finished RE4 for the GameCube, get ready to have to do it again. Besides that, there are a couple of new weapons and outfits in the game, and then there are all the kind of technical differences between the PS2 and the GameCube version. Uh, for one thing, the PS2 version supports true HD, so if you have a progressive scan display, you can view it in true widescreen with no black bars anywhere. The controls and the gameplay itself are pretty much identical across both versions, and uh, what's most impressive, perhaps, is that the graphics are pretty much all intact on the PS2. This game just looks unbelievably good. If you compare it side by side with the GameCube version, you might notice that the colors maybe aren't quite as rich, and the environments aren't quite as sharp, and there's some more loading times here and there, but overall, this game just looks amazing by PS2 standards, or really by any standards at all. Other than all that stuff, Resident Evil 4 for the PS2 is essentially the same game as the GameCube version. You play as Leon S. Kennedy, who's a government agent who goes looking in Europe for the president's daughter, who's apparently been kidnapped. Just as Leon starts looking around for the president's daughter, he finds out that something sinister is afoot when this kind of crazy stranger attacks him with an axe. Resident Evil 4 really isn't about all the storytelling, though. It's all there just as a setup to present some really fantastic in-your-face combat. There's just a lot of close quarters shooting at people who are doing all kinds of nasty things in an effort to kill you in horrible ways. It's scary, it's freaky, and it looks amazing, and it's just really thrilling pretty much from start to finish. Not only are your basic battles against the Ganados, these crazy villagers, really impressive in their own right, but Resident Evil 4 also packs in some really amazing boss battles just all throughout. One really neat thing that Resident Evil 4 does is make the cutscenes interactive. So not only are you watching these really cool looking, nicely produced cutscenes, but every now and then you'll have to do something in order to effectively survive what's going on in the cutscene and make Leon dodge or, or do something in order to escape certain peril. These interactive cutscenes are used sparingly and to very good effect throughout Resident Evil 4. While you're fighting, you'll find a great selection of weapons. You've got pistols and automatics and shotguns and all kinds of good hardware to use, and you even get to upgrade it and, and buy all kinds of different varieties of stuff. But the shopping interface is, is quite well done because you'll be forced to make some very tough decisions about whether to replace weapons or upgrade them, and basically you're always looking out for your ammo and you're really making all your shots count and you'll really grow to appreciate all your different weapons in this game. This is an action-adventure game, but the emphasis is definitely on action. Although previous Resident Evil games have thrown a lot of puzzle solving at you, this one really puts puzzles in the backseat, and that's, that's a good thing, really. The occasional puzzle is really mostly just there to give you a breather, and you aren't going to get stumped by these things for very long. Even so, Resident Evil 4 is definitely a long game, weighing in at 20 or 25 hours or more, especially if you factor in all the bonus extras. For a single-player-only game, this one's going to keep you busy for a very long time. Resident Evil 4 felt so well-crafted for the GameCube that we wondered whether the PlayStation 2 version could even come close. Well, it absolutely does. If you haven't played this game before because you don't have a GameCube or whatever, here's your chance. While the differences between the versions may be noticeable when you compare the two side by side, Resident Evil 4 for the PS2 is a completely amazing game in its own right, so definitely check it out.